Time to take a look at the uh, Flight Logic Synthetic Vision EFIS system that we have up here in Alaska that also has uh, ADSB to locate other aircraft in the area. It all works off the satellite, which is pretty cool. Here I'm taking off from Juneau, Alaska, heading up to Huna, Alaska. It's a pretty short flight, but this will give you a chance to see what this uh, synthetic vision is all about. Hope you enjoy it. Right now, we're taking off, and I'll be pointing at different things on the screen as I'm flying for you to see. On the left screen, the very left number, 97, 108, 109, is of course my speed. On the right side is uh, my altitude above sea level. 230, 250, and so forth. Just below my altitude is my altimeter setting of 29.93. What's really cool is the synthetic vision on the left that I'm pointing to shows that mountain coming up to the right. It's not really a mountain, but at least it shows and depicts it on the screen. So if you're in IMC conditions, it's very tough to uh, fly into a mountainside with this. By the way, on the right side, on the right screen on the top left, it shows the current winds, 303 degrees, 11 knots, kind of a, almost a headwind. Decision altitude, or my density altitude, my outside air temperature, and so forth. True airspeed, ground speed. I'm just coming across the bay now, and I'm looking at uh, putting in my airport I'm going to, which is Huna. That's Papa Alpha Oscar Hotel. It literally draws the line, the purple line. On the left screen, you'll actually see some green boxes. If I fly through each one of those boxes, it'll take me directly to the airport. That's called the new HITS system, H-I-T-S. That stands for Highway in the Sky. Unfortunately, though, that'll run you right into a mountainside if you have a mountain that's higher than you are. Uh, so make sure your horizon line, which is on the left screen, there's a white line that goes from the left all the way to the right. Uh, that, that is your horizon line. So you can see there's a few mountain ranges out there that are higher than I am. What I'm pointing at now is the uh, altitude above sea level. And I was also pointing at those green boxes, the HITS. I just hit my direct button and entered, and I put those uh, hit boxes back centered again if I wanted to fly those boxes which I don't because there's a mountain up here ahead of us that I have to go around in order to get to the airport. So that's how the uh, hits works. Right now I'm going to stay low. I have nobody on board. I'm just positioning the plane to Huna and I'll be picking up a charter of five people there. So I'm going to stay here around uh, anywhere between a thousand and fourteen hundred feet and it works out just pretty good. I'm coming up to an island right now called Portland Island out of Juno Airport. This is one of our reporting points where we call to traffic. Unfortunately, not everybody here in Alaska has the uh, Chelton system, so if they don't, they're not going to show up as traffic. But if you look at my right screen, you'll see a couple of uh, targets there. Just to the right of my uh, plane depicted, one looks like it's about seven hundred feet or six hundred feet below me just off my right wing and that target is going back in the Juno and the other target is going away from me off to a one o'clock position so I have no targets around me that are any kind of factor I'm also currently heading to uh, a pass called Funter Pass and if you look I'll be pointing to it here shortly but if you look on the right screen you'll see that orangish color and the green color of the island. Anything that's an orange is higher than I am so I don't want to fly into it. And On the left side it actually depicts the terrain as a mountain as I get closer so I'll be flying through that valley in front of me at uh, 1180 feet. Right now showing 1170. What's really amazing about this uh, Chilton system is the ability to fly in all weather and not fly into a mountainside. So it's really tough to do with this system. It's very expensive 
and most of the commercial air liners that uh, fly into Huna or fly into Juno will have this Chilton system. Right now I'm pointing at those little orange areas that are higher than I am. And on the left screen you actually can see my horizon line there are some brown areas that are higher than the horizon line to the left. And looking at the little picture in picture box you can see what's depicted. That's that mountain to the left of me with some snow on it, which I don't want to run into. <laughs> Pretty amazing system. Alrighty, we're back here recording. I'm currently looking at all the weather that's happening at Huna. The little box on the right side of the screen on the bottom right shows me the altimeter settings of the airport, latitude and longitude, the ASOS frequency, the CTAF frequency, runways are using, length of the runways, and all that information. It's pretty cool. And if you see up in front of my screen now, I have some targets coming at me. At the very bottom center of the right screen, you'll see the number 10 that's in a black box. That means that uh, first ring off of my plane is on a 10 mile ring. So I have a plane that's just inside 10 miles now, probably someplace around 7 miles. And you'll see a plus sign there and the number 15. So add a couple zeros, and that shows that that person's about approximately 1,500 feet above me, so he's really no factor. And he's right now just outside five miles from me. I'm uh, going over the water right now. This is actually a channel uh, that's very deep. It's uh, been carved out by glaciers. It's called Lynn Canal. It's over 2,000 feet deep. So <laughs> if, you, if you land on the water here, that plane's going to be at the bottom for a long time. Anyway, the more important plane I'm worried about is the next plane showing on my target that's about eight miles out and that's only uh, looks to be about uh, 500 feet above me so he's approximately 1450 1500 feet so I'll be watching for him as he gets within range of me two and a half to three miles I'll be able to pick him up and of course we're talking to each other too there's lots of CTAF uh, frequencies here in the channel that we use to talk to everyone so no matter if he's showing up or not I'll be able to talk to him notice how because he's uh, less than a thousand feet he's now showing up as a solid blue color or a greenish blue and he's now within five miles of me so since I'm watching for him I'm gonna take my scale turn the knob into two and a half miles the first guy is going over me. He's just about less than a mile away, but he's almost 1,400 feet above me. And I'll zoom back out to see the second guy. He's now uh, about, uh, oh, a little less than three miles away, coming to two and a half miles. And right now I'm looking for him. And I'm probably picking him up right now, and I'm talking to him and letting him know that I'm uh, below him, and we're looking at each other and maintaining separation. So... That's how the ADS-B works up here in Alaska. And like I said, most commercial aircraft up here have this Chilton system in their planes. This is all you need. These two screens, they do numerous things besides uh, what I'm using it for now. I'm just using it for VFR flight, but obviously lots of flight plans. You can literally fly the plane through the HITS system. It'll take you down through each step on an IFR flight plan coming in. So it's got some... Uh, amazing things this uh, Chilton system does.
what I'm pointing at now is the uh, direction to Huna, about 10.1 miles away. On the right side, it says ETE. Of course, you all know that means estimated time and route, and it looks like just a little under five minutes. I'll be there. Right now, I'm checking the uh, ASOS for the airport. I'll be getting the altimeter setting. On the left screen, the bottom right knob of the left screen, I turn that, and that changes the altimeter setting. It's a really simple interface to work on this Chelton system. Also off to the right of the plane depicted on the right screen, you'll see an SSR, I believe it is. That's uh, Sisters VOR. And the VORs are depicted with those uh, little triangular uh, green uh, pictures, just like you'd see on a sectional. So, pretty simple interface. Of course, all that area in front of me that's in orange, our mountains that are above me, all depicted. Right now I'm checking the information again for the weather. I'm changing the altimeter setting to 290.95, just a couple of notches up. And I'm just verifying that I'm on the correct uh, CTAF frequency in this area. It does change once we go past the sister's VOR it changes to a different frequency which is 122.7 so that's the next sector going into Huna so pretty cool system huh I thought when I first got in the plane it would take a whole lot to learn this system but it's very very simple there's the sisters VOR I'm passing uh, it's got everything I mean literally built into these two boxes uh, this FS system is probably uh, the easiest or one of the easiest I've ever seen and I uh, I love it a fun system Okay, I'm back to let you know we're getting close now to uh, Huna. We've got five miles to go on a heading of 227 degrees. And it shows us just a little over two and a half minutes before we're there. The little bay coming up that you see in the picture-in-picture -picture window, that's called Spasky Bay. And just past that we'll be setting up for our, our approach into runway 24 for a Huna. The winds are fairly calm, so it should be pretty easy landing. By the way, this is a uh, 207 stationaire, 300 horsepower to normally uh, uh, gross weight is 3,800 pounds uh, with people and fuel. That's our max takeoff weight. It doesn't get a lot of speed, but uh, carries a fairly decent uh, load in it, so it's used quite a bit throughout Alaska. We also have caravans we use in our company so caravans are also a lot of fun to fly although it's not fuel injected it's a jet engine as most of you know that uh, uses the exhaust from the jet engine to turn the props it old turbo props I'm sure you've heard of those now we looked on the left and right left screen you'll see some mountains out there depicted that are higher than my uh, my uh, line the white line that goes across which is my neutral line sky in the top and the brown on the bottom and I'm descending now down to 750 what's really amazing with this uh, synthetic vision if I had an emergency I literally could fly this plane like a cat 3 landing down to zero zero conditions if I had to I could pretty well get this plane on the ground on the runway so as I come down to land here you'll actually be able to see the runway appear you'll see all kinds of interesting little icons appear on the left screen if I was doing an instrument approach, which I'm not. But it kind of centers you up. If you look off in the distance there on the uh, left screen now, you'll see the circle depicting where I really want to put my circle. And you also see the glide slope, a little yellow icon coming in here to match up. Look in the top picture and picture box, you'll see the runway. Now you'll start to see the runway appear in the left screen. So I just want to line up my 
white identifier on the left screen with the runway and bring it down about 120 feet showing me 20 15 feet 5 feet off the ground and just about ready to land right there across the runway so you just kind of hold it level and try and put it down the runway and that's the way it works so really in a in an emergency situation you can actually make yourself a pretty good ILS and do a cat 3 landing that's only an emergency obviously if you had low field hope you folks have enjoyed this it's been kind of fun putting this together and letting all my friends uh, uh, check out what this Chilton system is about so you guys have a, a great day this is Pilot Dave saying see you later